If you want to know my secret strategy on how to get what you want and how to sell, it is this video. And uh, I always told my kids, if you want to get whatever you want in this world, it is through the route of not a college degree, it is through the route of sales. So with that being said, what's my secret closing strategies? What's the, the fast track in order to help you get what you want through the path of sales? Okay, I'm gonna break it down to you. Do you wanna know the skill set to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire? This video is for you. Listen, my kids came by the house the other day and they said, Pop, you know, we're really frustrated about this whole pandemic. You know, our school shut down. They just graduated high school last year. Now they're going to college and their first year in college, it was shut down because of the, the, the COVID uh, coronavirus the pandemic. And they said, Pop, we need to have a conversation. What do we do? What do we do? Do we go back to college in the fall? And listen, I've always told them, listen, even though we've had a conversation since they were in seventh and eighth grade, says, babe, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Because I always told them that their currency is their grades. Their currency is them being an all around great student. Their currency is how to apply for their FAFSA and get some grants and scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. And I was saying this from a perspective of me not being a college graduate. I'm saying this from a perspective of me being in the United States Marine Corps for eight years, transitioning into business, transitioning into the insurance industry, you know, making making six figures in this industry, making seven figures in this industry without a college degree. And I said, you know what? I've always wanted to say my kids are going to be improved the next generation because I'm going to help them through college, but I can never really give them any confidence with any moral authority to say that that's the route to go to. If anything, I think that going to college for them was more of a, more of an opportunity to build a network of people that are advancing and want to get ahead and they can build a database and a friendship in this in this era, social media database of people that are rising up and going in business somewhere. And I said, Bobby, so what's the skill set? What's the skill set? What do we need to do to become successful? What do we need to do to become, you know, a cash flow millionaire and make some money? Well, let's let's take a look at a couple of things. President Trump, June 29th, here of the date of this article, but early uh, this year in, in June, there's a week ago, he signed into an executive order that he is putting in order that skills over degrees in federal, in federal hiring. The largest employer in the United States is the federal government. And even he put the elevation of skills over college degrees in federal hiring, right? And of course, college groups are saying that executive order were not lessen the value of, degree, of degrees. Of course they're gonna say that, of course they're gonna say that. But here's what I always believed in my heart. And many of you may have believed this too as well in your rise to success that the stipulation of having a college degree in order to be successful, that the stipulation of having a college degree in order to make six figures, and in this case, if you're watching this YouTube channel, to make seven figures is through the route of earning a college degree, a master's degree, in this case, a PhD, and we completely obliterated that process due to our current reality. My, my, let, me, let me show you a quick picture. My wife, she graduated uh, through the University of Pittsburgh. My wife was a, she was a softball player. Between the two of us, my wife is the more attractive, she is the more smarter, obviously the more athletic between the two of us. And she got a degree in finance, right? And we started dating, we started dating, and she kept hearing my talk, she kept hearing my pitch, she kept hearing me in the car, talking to my business partners, coaching entrepreneurs. And she goes, babe, what, you, what is it that you do? So we started talking, I said, you know, babe, I'm, I'm in the business world of recruitment, and leadership development, I help people be successful entrepreneurial agents and inside the insurance industry. And she was like, that's, that's, that's odd because I'm in sales. I'm in, I'm in, cor I'm, I'm in uh, medical sales working for Striker Medical. Anyway, make a long story short. If you want to know my secret strategy on how to get what you want and how to sell, it is this video. And uh, I always told my kids, if you want to get whatever you want in this world, it is through the route of not a college degree. It is through the route of sales. So with that being said, What's my secret closing strategies? What's the, the fast track in order to help you get what you want through the path of sales? So in, in this video, I'm talking more from the service-based position of sales. Now, I've never been a guy that sold cars or sold, uh, sold you know, appliances or, or sold a commodity or sold a product. I've always been in a position of selling services. I'm, I'm service-based. So this may or may not work for your field, but it's worked a lot for our guys across the country. It's allowed our guys to grow from 66 agents in 2009 to today, over 15,000 independent agents, entrepreneurial agents running their own businesses across the country using this type of methodology. So it may work for you. And so it, it, back to the college conversation, there's more corporations that say, you know what? We are flexible companies that do not require a college degree. Like who? If you, you uh, want to get a job application for Google, Ernst & Young, Penguin Random House, Hilton, Apple, Nordstrom, IBM, Lowe's, many of these corporations today are not requiring a college degree to get a job there. And some guys are elevating to high, uh, high corporate positions and, 
in this case, sales position. So my encouragement to them and my guidance to them, if you want to get to the fast track, the path of making money, six figures, seven figures, building a company, you got to learn sales. You got to learn sales. Even if you do have a college degree, I'm teaching people right now with PhDs, master's degrees. They've been part of different businesses. They've been part of athletics. They've been part of the military. The skill set in order to get what you want is through the path of learning sales. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a little bit of my strategies and how to be a better salesperson. So uh, let me break this down real quick. Most people think that being a salesperson is a bad thing. But think about this. Isn't everything sales? Well, no, Matt. You know, I have a college degree. I, I, I'm not good at sales. I don't believe in sales. Uh, I, I don't believe that everything is about sales. Da, 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 da. Great. But listen, the, 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 the pastor that you listen to, aren't they good in sales? The politicians that you're going to vote to, aren't they going to sell you something for you to vote for them? The movies that you watch, your actors, your actresses, aren't they good in sales because you like the way they act, they like the way they sell the story? It's the books that you read. Is it the best selling author, not necessarily the best writing author? Isn't that the books you buy? The musicians that you listen to, the, the way they sell, express their music. Don't you buy their music versus the ones that don't? And don't you get a different experience when they're able to, you're able to see them live where they're able to express and how they deliver their music? versus just hearing on an a, 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 MP3 or a CD. See, these are some of the assets that you don't think about. And for the people that say, I'm not good at sales, my friend, you are good at sales. Well, what do you mean, Matt? You're selling yourself that you're not good. And you're buying it. And you bought it. And you're believing it. And you're owning it. You see, you're good at sales. You sold yourself a limiting belief. You sold yourself a settlement result. You settled for a result. Versus saying, you know what? I deserve the best aspect of my life, life in, in finances, life in business, my life in my career. You can sell yourself one or two different mindsets, a mindset of success or a mindset of mediocrity and just being able to have the same old, same old. I remember in the military, you used to say all the time, hey Matt, how you doing today? You know what they used to say? How you doing today? The response would be like, another day, another dollar. Or the response used to be, same old shit, same day. That used to be the, the conversation. So. In this conversation, I want to share with you, if you want to be good at sales, you got to understand your process. First thing, uh, one of my favorite shows to watch is The Prophet with Marcus Limonis. It comes on right after Shark Tank. And, he, and, and, and when he's analyzing your business, right, Marcus, the show The Prophet, maybe we might put a couple uh, uh, shots of him right here. Many episodes he had to help business. He invests in businesses. And one of the things that he says in his business, before he evaluates in business, the reason why he invests in, the reason why he has a show it's not going to invest in business and to save businesses, but also to create jobs. And so one of his areas, he has a three-part process before he invests in your business, is product, people, and process. So I'm going to presume you got a product you want to sell. I'm going to presume you want to invest in a number one person in your business, which is yourself. The third reason why you're watching this video, which is the third part, is understanding your process. So for example, in our business, in our business, we got six steps. We got six steps in our process. And uh, Marshall Thurber, who is a systems expert, process expert, he says 85% of your success is due to the first 15% of your process. If you screw up the first 15% of your process, you're gonna have 85% failure. If you improve and streamline and, and, and enhance the first 15% of your process, that's gonna be 85% success of your experience in sales. So when we bring on new guys, new salesperson, it, it, when you are selling for yourself for the very first time, you have to understand, what's the first part of my process? Is, what's, what's the first part of my process? Is, is it my prospecting? Is it my approach and contact? Is it my scripts? Is it how I find the right, is it find the right qualified candidates? Whatever your process is, you got to master and understand the first 15% of your process. Therefore, it can mean failure or it can mean success. So figure that stuff out. 85% of success or failure is due to, due to the first 15% of your process. I'll give you an example. For our, for our process, is having our guys understand certain scripts. Now, there's a myriad of scripts our guys can learn. I encourage my guys, learn one script. Of the four or five, six scripts that you'll learn, master one. Master one script. And the second part of this mastering process, if I would encourage my guys, and this might be lateral to your business, your field, your chosen endeavor, is understanding who is a qualified prospect. Because not everybody out there is a qualified prospect. And I'll get that to that here in a second. The second part about this is positioning. Okay, what do I mean by position? This is you. You got a lot of things going on in your business. You got marketing going on. You got your reputation. You got your results. You got all these things going on in, in business. If you're able to position yourself, you're either working downhill 
or you're working uphill if you don't position yourself. But if you position yourself in a sales process, you can either work easier working downhill or work harder working uphill. So in this, in this scenario, marketing is that how you position yourself in the marketplace. How do people reading about you? Are people learning about you? Are people hearing about you? You know, uh, Patrick Ben David, my, my mentor, he says, listen, before people know your name, they're going to learn your voice. They're going to then learn how you look, and then they're going to learn your name. Let me repeat that one more time. Before people get to know your name, they're going to learn your voice. Then you're going to learn your face. And they're going to learn your name. Isn't that it, isn't it kind of an interesting thing? How many times have you said somebody, you're describing your favorite artist or your favorite influencer? How many times do people say, yeah, that's the guy that did that talk. That's the guy that did that talk. That's the girl that did that talk. Don't you describe people that way? What's their name again? Oh, their name is this. I find myself doing that many times. And so if you're part of a sales process, people are going to know how you sound. They're going to know your face. And they're going to know then your name. It's part of your, your, your marketing strategy. Reputation is, is a person follow through what they say? Have they been around long? Is this something they just started? And if there's something they just started, are they creating results? What are the things that people are saying about them? The good, the bad, the ugly. You have to discern whether it's haters, you have to discern whether it's competitors, or you have to discern whether it's the truth. And that, that all has to go down with your, your marketing strategy, how you position yourself on social media, and obviously word of mouth, which basically all social media is. All social media is, is a megaphone to express word of mouth because instead of just picking up the phone or people saying good things about you via text message, whatever, word of mouth lives for a long time on social media. So to improve your process and how to sell by positioning yourself in a marketplace helps you either work uphill harder or downhill easier. Now the third part about this process and your sales strategy and how you close easier or harder is understanding both verbal and nonverbal communication. Verbal and nonverbal communication. Let's take a look at this article here. Uh, lots of times people say, man, it, it's, it's about what you say. No, no, no. It's how you say things. You don't say, here's an article here by Ty Nguyen in the Entrepreneur Magazine. You know, he talks about Dr. Albert Morabian is known for his breakdown of the human, human communication into 7% spoken words, 38% tone of voice, and 55% body language. Let me repeat that one more time. So what he's saying in this, Dr. Morabian is saying this, what you say, what people understand is 7% words. <laughs> what? The other portion is tonality, your tone of voice, and the 55% is body language. Now, how many guys have seen the show Blue Man Group? Blue Man Group is an uh, is a expression of the statement. Why? I've watched the show many times. I've taken my kids out there over the course of 15 years. I've seen the Vegas show, I've seen the Chicago show. And how many words do the Blue Man Group say? You know how many words? Zero. They play music, they have expression. It is a franchise show that has been in multiple markets that's lasted over 20 years. But zero words are ever spoken by the Blue Man Group. And it's a very successful show. How many times do you see people, without saying a word, just using their eyebrows, their facial expressions, they communicate something? That's a big reason why you love comedians. Matter of fact, one of the comedians I love to hear is Bernie Mac. I'm from Chicago. Bernie Mac's from Chicago. How many times does he use the word Because the word is both a noun and a verb and an adjective. For example, he uses the word so many different times, 32 different times, and people understand exactly what the word means, right? And it's so funny. People relate to it. People understand it. And it isn't just the word It's how he says it. The tonality of it says the word Ain't that a For example, remember him during the Kings of Comedy? But a black folk, we loud. That's not the fifth man in this. We, we loud. We talk aggressive, you know. They get a talk, you know, we ain't gonna do that to you. By the way, don't comedians sell? Doesn't Kevin Hart sell? Doesn't Eddie Murphy sell? Isn't it doesn't Dave, uh, David Chappelle, don't they sell? Does Joe Coy sell? Your favorite comics, what do they do? They sell. So if you want to have a strategy on how to sell better, I'm a big student of understanding comics and how they have a message, how they deliver the message, the tonality and human uh, body language that they use in order to sell their topic that they're discussing to make you laugh. And I believe that comedians have the highest form of public speaking, highest form of public speaking. Very difficult. Why? Then I don't have to capture your attention, but they got to create a reaction from you. So I'm a big student. If you want to learn how to sell better 
and have a strategy on how to close better, study comics. So at this point, we discussed, number one, we discussed you understanding 85% of your process. Number two, we discussed positioning. Number three, we discussed your body language and tonality. The fourth thing about sales, take people from a text message to phone and in person. Convert, convert them to a text message, convert them to a phone call, convert them to an in-person meeting, or in this case, during this pandemic, during this lockdown, social distancing, Zoom conference. Why? To edify the first three points I just talked about. Listen, how many times have you seen somebody send you a text message and you've received a text message and you were in a bad mood? They may have, the other side may have a good intention, but since you were in a bad mood, you're reading it with, bad, with, a, uh, with a bad situation in front of you. You just read it wrong. And then because you read it wrong, you send a nasty message right back. Let's key in this segment here from Key and Peel on getting a text message. Been trying to reach out to you all day. So, so here's a situation. He's obviously hustling and bustling. I've been reaching out to you all day. Boom, right? This, isn't this you sometimes? You're dealing with the kids, you're dealing with your career, you're dealing with your job, you're dealing with your spouse. Are we on for tonight? Are we on for tonight? And then his boy, uh, uh, his boy is on the other side playing video games, all relaxed, chilling out. Then he gets a text message. Check this out. I'm last more. Touchdown. <laughs> what? Pause. <laughs> Uh, lighten up, light, lighten up a bong. Get the text message. Sorry, dude. Missed your texts. I assumed we'd meet at the bar. Whatever. I don't care. Good mood. So my point is, you guys got to check out this video, this episode. One's in a bad mood. One's in a good mood. One's sending out a bad mood and from a bad disposition. The other one is responding to the test with a good disposition. What's my point? If you want to sell. You cannot sell over text message. Big problem. You cannot sell over Facebook and LinkedIn Messenger. You cannot sell over email. Now, some of you might disagree with me, but listen, I'm in a service-based business. I want to show people why they should do business, not necessarily with my company, but why they should do business with me. I'm leading them through this process. So if you want a better experience from your end user, from the person that you're either trying to recruit or sell or lead or develop, it's best to get it off of copy message, text message, into a phone call, and even better yet, Zoom, or an in-person meeting. Next one is to pre-qualify. I, I have a funny saying here, money smart guy, entrepreneur, does weed six, seven times a day. What, what, what would you just say? Yeah, I weed people in, and I weed people out. What were you thinking? Listen, just because everybody's potential prospect doesn't necessarily they should be spent time with because they're not either in a buying uh, decision uh, moment, they don't have the key decision makers, they don't have the money, they have the money to go shopping, and B, they're not, really, they're not ready to make an urgent move. These are some of the ways I pre-qualify. So in other words, I'm not talking to somebody that doesn't want to buy or doesn't want to make a decision. Make sense? Oftentimes people say, they're not wanting to do this, they're not waiting to do that. Well, because you're talking to somebody that's not predisposed to doing business to begin with. So if you want to have a key to your sales strategy is to find hungry, enthusiastic, hungry buyers. I was asking somebody who uh, has a restaurant. He said, Matt, you know, how come my restaurant is failing? I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this. Am I doing this? Is that the food? Is it the service? Is it the ambiance? I said, here's a problem, bro. You're marketing to non-hungry people. The key to having a successful restaurant is not only having good product, having good food, having good ambiance, and giving good service, but man, you got to find people that are hungry. So market to people during lunchtime, market to people during dinner time. You're marketing to the people at the wrong times of their day. So the key to running a successful business is to find people who have a predisposition to doing business with you. So what does that mean? They're dissatisfied with the current service. They're dissatisfied with their current product. They have a, a pain they need to uh, solve. They have a, a, a problem they need a solution to, and here you are to solve it above and beyond the competition in the marketplace. So if you wanna have a, str a strategy to sell more people, find hungry, motivated buyers. And last but not least, if you find somebody that's hungry, that's motivated, that has a predisposition, that predisposition to want to make a decision, that they're there with all the decision makers, and they have a, they have a need for your service, closing, somebody asked me, man, what's your best closing technique? Listen, I don't have a best closing technique. I have a best opening technique, but I don't have a best closing technique, which leads me to this, my, my question, if I'm going to close. My next question is this to the to prospect. Would you like to know the next steps? It seems to me that what you got going on and what you have currently isn't solving your problem. 
Would you like to know the next steps? Do you think this makes sense for you to move forward? Do you think that what we have, what we offer, what we're providing will help solve your problem? Yes, yes, great. Well, it sounds to me that there isn't any reason why we shouldn't be doing business together. There should be no reason why you, should, we and, you and I shouldn't be working together. Would you agree? Yes. Then would you like to know the next steps? And shut up. Yeah, I would like to know the next steps. So you'd like, you, you like to move forward then? I would like to move forward. Because if you're selling it, you're telling it. If they're saying it, they're buying it. So for me, I like to hear some verbal confirmation from somebody that they're willing to buy. Because I don't want to put, put people in a position where I feel, oh man, Matt sold me. No, no, no. I want to put people in a position that say, you know what? I want to move forward. I want to hear it from them. Again, because if you're selling it, if you're telling it, you're selling it. But if they're saying it, then they're buying it with their words. They're putting their words behind their actions and their brain is hearing their voice saying it that they're buying it. It allows them to emotion connect into the process for them to move forward. So therefore the feelings of regret are, are further minimized. Last but not least, as I wrap up this episode, I work from a specific mindset as it regards to sales and growing my business. And what is that mindset? There's two different dispositions. You work from a scarcity mentality where you think there's a finite amount of customers or you work from an abundance mentality where there's an overwhelming amount of potential customers for your service or your business, your product. A lot of times people approach sales, the people approach their product and service, they approach them from a position like me, myself, and I, dog eat dog, cutthroat type of uh, capacity. I just don't work for that position. Listen, if somebody wants me to you know, hustle them and shake them down why they should do business with you, that's probably not my customer. Just because they could be doing business with you doesn't mean they should be doing business with you. You, as a salesperson, you, as an entrepreneur, also have the position of saying, you know what? I have the position so to, to, to attract clients that I like to work with or not. Sometimes the freedom is not saying yes. Sometimes the freedom is also, from your standpoint, saying no. And using the takeaway is also in your arsenal and where you grow your business. Why? because you're operating from an abundance mentality. So if you're operating from an abundance mentality, not only are you loose, your clients feel that you're loose, your clients feel that, man, this person uh, uh, doesn't need a, to put me in a corner, they don't feel that you're thirsty. I like operating from that position versus saying, you know what, you represent my car payment, you represent my mortgage payment, you represent my lifestyle, no, no, no. If you're doing that way, you're doing a disservice to your customer. Because here in America, it depends on where your product's at, but at least in America, there's an overwhelming amount of prospects. There's a lot of money out there to be made. I mean, I mean, right now, uh, uh, what, Amazon is a trillion dollar company, and there's still tons of money to be made. We're operating in a $63 trillion market in terms of retirement services and insurance and pension plans. There's an overwhelming amount of money to be made in America. And I choose to operate from a position of abundance versus scarcity. A lot of our guys are reading this book right now called The Game of Numbers. We'll put the, the book out here by Nick Murray. I, I asked Nick, Nick, what would you tell my guys? What would you tell my guys? We'll put, we'll put his response here. He, he would say, my guys, this. If you're reading my book, The Game of Numbers, which is professional prospecting for financial professionals, is this. Don't be so connected to the outcome of your process, but be connected to the process. Whether to say yes or no is immaterial, secondary only to the, the fact that you're actually doing the work, prospecting. Listen, if you prospect, you go out, bang out phones, you make phone calls, you put yourself out there, you position yourself the right way, a bunch of businesses is coming away. Oftentimes people don't want to buy into it because they want to take a shortcut. They want to find a hack. You thought you were watching a hack to have more sales. Listen, there's, there's no hack. The, the only hack that I found in 21 years of doing business is committing to the process, committing to the opportunity for this, to, to, to your marketing efforts to start compounding efforts and for more people to start calling you and contacting you and ready to do business with them, saying, you know what, I watch you online, I've seen your videos, I've heard about the work that you do, I see the results that you're creating, I want to.